It was uh, it was quite wonderful in that um, being born bred in Toronto and having our early married life in Toronto, working life before moving to the U.S. Uh, you could still take Toronto on your own terms, it's still your town. And we got to know Lewiston and Buffalo and Youngstown to some extent. We got to know Hamilton to some extent, and it was really, in many respects, the the locus of um, of a web of all kinds of things to do. It was great. Uh, it was more rustic, certainly. Uh, it wasn't terribly sophisticated, although the Shaw Festival was going great guns. The new theater, of course, opened in 1973, and that put the Shaw even more on the map. We were very involved in observing that and participating in certain things, including the Queen's visit and all that sort of thing. Um, the school was just up the way, Parliament Oak, literally two blocks, it was great for the kids. Um, the traffic jam at that time was probably two cars, not three cars. Or now it's perhaps five or six cars. Um, CNC Yachts was going great guns, that was fairly close, you could smell the fiberglass every now and then as boats were being completed, etc., etc. Um, and then some fairly significant change began to occur and be observed. I mean, one of the one of the changes, of course, was the work the, the Niagara Foundation did, uh, moving homes. I remember the Campbell home being moved from the main street, for example, being put on Dorchester. I remember, obviously, the apothecary being completed, etc., etc. The foundation was very active in those days. Uh, usually every year they had a project of some sort that would result in some home being restored, uh, moved in some cases, etc. Um, we were lucky too in that <laughs> about then um, the town was you know, observed to be a tourist town. Uh, tourism was growing. Pillar and Post was there, the Prince, of, the Prince of Wales was not quite restored, but it was in the process of being so fairly soon. Um, Queen's Landing hadn't been built, but that wasn't that far off either, and the Shaw was very, very popular. Um, we even had a nightclub after the Shaw, Dinah Christie and Tom Nebel would entertain up upstairs in the buttery. So you know, there were things to do, the, the streets didn't roll up at 9 o'clock at night necessarily. As they would during the winter, uh, so it was beginning to beginning to really percolate uh, in many respects. And it was interesting being close to John as in Drove, and others perhaps shared this. But John had a vision of with the way this town would develop that has turned out to be quite incredibly accurate. He foresaw the development of tourism. Uh, he could almost pick out which streets would be fixed and developed where subdivisions would grow and so on. It's really quite impressive, really. And of course, here we are today in a very different environment, uh, bigger, etc. That uh, uh, is an example of, of uh, how, how clairvoyant in many respects he was, at least given my memory of what he, what he said and we talked about it at some length. So it was, a, it was a fun place to live. It was a great place to grow family uh, because we were used to urban settings, whether it's Toronto or Washington or Cal somewhere in California or whatever, uh, we, were, we were comfortable in moving out. There was a whole cadre, still is of course, of people that the city was St. Catharines, and maybe Niagara Falls, but usually St. Catharines, and Toronto was a, a place you wouldn't go because it was too crowded and so on. But we were a little different in some respects, anticipating the influx of people that began really accelerated in the 80s, 90s, and certainly it's very legion here, where Niagara Lake became a weekend, let's buy a home for the weekending, and then kind of a retirement or some retirement place, and much more sophisticated, if you like sophistication and believe in that sort of thing.